So uh, thanks for joining me. It's kind of like the last section of the day. I was getting a little worried that nobody would show up. And here you all are. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, my name's Steve. Uh, I'm a Java developer advocate at a company called Nexmo. Um, and on the side, I do a little bit of Python and dabbling and sometimes card tricks. Um, I want to start with a disclaimer. Did anybody go to Guy Royce's talk, the deep learning like a Viking? OK, cool. So he shows you this acronym, and I've credited it to him here. He said he took it from somebody else. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't name them. Um, but this, do you remember what this stands for? I am not a data scientist. Yes, that is absolutely true. I do have a background in mathematics, but it's more on the like, data forecasting, not so much like the data science part. Um, I'm going to throw in another disclaimer. Anybody want to wager at this one? I'm not a Python developer. Yeah, I already mentioned I'm, uh, I'm the Java developer advocate at Nexmo. Uh, so most of my focus is in Java and Kotlin. Um, so thanks for being so welcoming. Um, I will say that's definitely one of the benefits of the Python community is they're, they're just so nice and friendly and, and accepting of that. So, uh, But you're not really here to learn about me. You're here to kind of hear me talk about computer vision and, and card tricks. So I want to start with the premise of a card trick. Uh, you, you may have heard this before. Are you familiar with card tricks? You, know, you fan out the cards. You say, pick a card, any card. And um, actually, uh, Penn of Penn and Teller said that this is getting somebody to pick a card is almost impossible. Like, if you go to a party and fan out a deck of cards and ask them to pick a card, they will tell you no, and they'll also tell you to leave. Um, so that's kind of the mentality that, that we have towards magicians. Um, hopefully, you participate with this specific magician, and you pick a card. Now. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Prestige, um, but they say that every magic trick has three parts or three acts. And so typically, the way it works is, is they show you something ordinary. And they may even hand you the deck and say, this is an ordinary deck of cards. Or you've made this choice on your own. And so you, you fan it out, you pick a card, and I'm going to try to do this. Uh, I don't do card tricks. So. Uh, so I get the 10 of clubs here. And it is an ordinary card. It's an ordinary deck. And then they do something kind of miraculous with it. They say, take the card, put it back somewhere in the deck, and, and the trick kind of then begins. They do some fancy things with the deck. They say, I'm going to cut the deck. I'm going to shuffle the deck. I'm going to do all of these things. I'm going to claim to do all of these things, because we know they're not really doing these things. Uh, and then at the end, I can't just make the card disappear. Like Anybody could put the card in the deck and say, hey, the trick's done. Cool. Let's go home. Uh, but that's not really what happens. The exciting part is, is actually saying, oh, I'm going to tap on the deck, and then we hope, and we flip the card over, and, and there it is. Woo! Um, and that's the prestige, right? That's the impressive part of the magic trick. And I don't quite follow what the prestige says. So my question really is, where is the magic in all of this trick? Is it in the, the ordinariness of the deck? The you can pick a card. This is an ordinary card. You've picked it. Is it in the putting the card back into the deck, and then doing all of these fancy shuffles and claiming that I'm losing the card and I'm going to find it. Is it finding the card, or is it something else? And I think that the real magic is, as somebody who, who is, I'm going to say, sight enabled, so as somebody who can see, I can look at this card and immediately say, that's the nine of clubs. And I could say, that's the nine of hearts. And more impressively, if you've never seen this specific deck of cards before, but you've seen a similar deck, like this Ten of Clubs, it doesn't matter. You can still identify it as that Ten of Clubs. There's this signaling process that happens between our eyes and our brain that is almost instantaneous. And I think that's the real magic in all of this. And getting computers to do it is, is even more magical. And that's where the area of computer vision comes in. So computer vision, we're trying to teach computers how to understand the visual world. And we do this because we want to offload some of the work on computers. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we want self-driving cars. Well, for self-driving cars, they, they should probably be able to see the signs around them, or the cars around them, or the lines on the road, all these other visual cues. Um, for those who might not be able to see, there are apps out there. You can point them at, at something, and it can say, this is a cup, and this is a, a bottle of water, or something like that. I've even heard of an app that they're working on that can take sign language and convert it into text or speech, so that those who are nonverbal can communicate using sign language into a camera feed. And I think that's kind of a really cool use of it. 
So it has a lot of these uses, and we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to play around with playing cards and see what happens. Um, really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show playing cards on a webcam feed and then try to answer two questions. And this is the, the, the whole idea of detection or image detection. Uh, it's, it's two parts. The first is, where is the card in the view or the video? This is the localization part of detection. And then the second part is, which card is it? That's the, um, the classification part. So classification, localization, that whole thing makes up detection. Now, because this is only a 30-minute talk, I only really have time to get into the localization part. And I'm going to show you some code examples. Uh, I've got links at the end to the code examples. And I've got links to full code examples at the end to actually show how you could implement the detection step um, later on. So the first thing we need to start with is getting a webcam feed. Um, this is some Python code. I mentioned I'm not a Python developer, so this may look like a Java developer wrote Python code, and this, that's probably true. Um, so I use this whole main method thing. I don't know if anybody else does that, but that's what I do, because uh, then I can define methods anywhere in the file. And, um, the important parts I'll start to highlight. You don't have to like copy all this down and, and try to like grok it all right now. Uh, we're going to start with two different libraries or packages. The first one, we're going to use the Open Computer Vision Library. Uh, this has a lot of tools in it to do computer vision stuff. I'll probably call it CV2 just because of the name there, and that's what I associate it with. Uh, the second package that I bring is called IMUtils. This is just a convenience package for image processing. So I can do things like resizing images and flipping images and um, some image manipulation without having to actually do it all myself. Um, so then I wrote some code to capture the video. CV2 has a video capture method. That one there is the device that I'm using. I'm using an external webcam to capture. So I use one because that's the second webcam. My, my computer already has one built in. Uh, if you try the code at home and you're using like the built-in computer webcam, you probably have to change that to a zero. Uh, and then I start a loop because a video feed is just a bunch of images played in sequence. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from that capture every time through the loop and I'm going to create what's called a frame. And then I draw the frame. And, and when I do that, it creates a video. Now, I have some video in here. I'm just going to show you a single capture. This is what we end up getting. And now that we have the webcam feed, we can say, well, there's the card. Job's done. Except, again, I'm doing it, not the computer. So we want to try to get the computer to do it. And computers need our help. So as software developers, one of the things we do is we train computers to do things because we either don't want to do it anymore, or maybe we can't do it. And so that's what we're going to try to do. But looking at the image, there's a lot of things going on. There's stuff in the background. There's color. There's different lighting conditions. There's shadow. There's an angle that the card's at. All of these things can have an impact on how the computer can read the image. So the first thing we need to do once we have the image is to process it. And this process is called normalization. I put it in a method just so that it's a little easier to, to call all of it together. Um, and then I'll walk through each step in the method. In order to do this, uh, some of these things require using NumPy. It's a mathematical library. It adds things like big data, matrices, uh, other math functions. So we do end up using that a little bit in here. And the first step in the normalization is to get rid of all of the color, because I don't actually need the color to tell where the card is. In fact, I don't need the color to tell what the card is either. So we can just get rid of that altogether. Uh, OpenCV has this function called CVT color. It takes an image, and then it takes a, uh, a type of conversion. So images by default are stored as blue, green, red. We're converting it to grayscale. So we're getting rid of some of that extra color. And we get an image like this. Roughly the same image. I had to hold still really quickly while I was capturing a whole bunch of this. Um, so it's a little different. But I've gotten rid of all of the color. There's still some data in this image that we don't necessarily care of. If you've ever looked at cards really closely, and I know you can't see it when I hold it up, um, there's this kind of like linen lines, I think they refer to it as. There's like a texture to the cards. And depending on how good your camera is, you can pick that texture up. And that texture actually affects how the image gets read in. Um, so we don't want to get too detailed with the image. We want to try to soften it a little bit. And so we're going to apply a little bit of blurring. And I'm actually using bilateral filtering um, because 
Unlike Gaussian blur, which you might be familiar with, it's like a Photoshop function, also CV2 function, Gaussian blur softens the whole image. Bilateral filtering softens the image, but it keeps all the edges. So I don't, the card doesn't start to blend into the background. This takes a few different parameters. Um, one of these is the size of the filter. I don't know all of how this works. Um, and the other one is like the sigma space, which is kind of how blurry it's going to become. Uh, your lingering question might be, how do you come up with these numbers? You make it up until it works. Uh, that's at least how I did it. I'm sure somebody is out there who is really experienced in data science and, and imagery and all of this and could come up with some exact numbers. I spent about a week coming up with numbers and, and I found ones that worked. So, sorry. Uh, but this is what I get. It's a little softer. Uh, my wife actually said this is kind of like going from Toy Story 1 to like Toy Story 4 because there was a lot of detail in like the jeans and everything, but if you go back to the original one, it's really soft and kind of blurry. Um, and so I, I thought that was a kind of a cool analogy between them. But hopefully you can see the image got a little smoother, but the edge of the card is still there. And we want the edge of the card there because the next thing we're gonna do is called canny edge detection. Um, or just edge detection. Canny is one of the more popular methods of edge detection. Um, we'll just refer to it as edge detection. Now, you may have heard of other detection methods out there, like there's one called YOLO, you only look once. Uh, typically, you'll go through something like maybe TensorFlow or Keras. Um, there's uh, neural networks, deep learning, you know, there's all these other techniques here. And a lot of that, the reason I didn't go with that is because it's really complicated for me. And this is like one method that I was able to just kind of throw in there. Um, everything comes at a cost, like deep learning, neural networks, there's a training step that's involved. And, and sometimes that, stra that training step takes time. Um, canny edges doesn't take any training. It just takes fiddling around with those numbers until you get numbers that work. Uh, so the way that this is working is, is really it's looking at the image and it's looking at regions of contrast or color that are similar to one another. And that's what that minimum and maximum threshold determine is how close do these colors need to be to determine that something is an edge. So like if I take the card and hold it up to my shirt, which is kind of dark, there's an edge there because we're going from dark to light. But if I take it and hold it up to, to the side here, there's not as big of a color difference there. So that's where we need to adjust that threshold to make sure that the card shows up. A lot of this is really dependent on lighting. Um, the third parameter makes the canny function more accurate. I have no idea how. Somebody said it makes it more accurate, so I throw a true in there and it makes it more accurate. Um, I'm assuming that it takes some more cost or some more time investment to do that. Um, it's worked both ways. So, uh, this is what we get. So these are the edges. Um, and you can hopefully see that the card is, is kind of coming into focus a little bit. Uh, you can actually see some pretty good detail. I can start to see the, the suit of the card. Um, I can see even the, the Nexmo logo on my shirt down there. Um, so canny edges, I think, are, are pretty cool. Uh, I did want to talk about why canny edges. I, I mentioned some of the cost there. Um, you know, you, you have to train these other models. This is really just a, a simplistic way of taking an image and looking at what we have instead of saying, here's a bunch of stuff we expect, and then in the future predict to see if we actually got what we did. Um, there are gonna be pros and cons to all of that. I did try using something like TensorFlow to, to do this detection, but because I'm doing it on a live video feed, uh, it's really, really slow. And um, I'm sure there are ways to speed it up, but I found that canny edges is one of the nice ways to get into computer vision, and then once you get satiated with this, you, you go on to the next kind of more advanced stuff. Um, so this, this works on my level, at least. Um, so back to this. You know, the, the card is kind of showing up a little bit. There's still a lot of information there. And um, so that's where we start to say, how do we isolate that, that card? Um, you know, and there's, there's even some imperfections too. So like the edges around the card are a little jagged. They might not be fully connected. And so the next thing we wanna do is, is maybe make those edges a little thicker. And that process is known as dilation. Like when you go to the optometrist and they dilate your eyes and your pupils get way blown out, they get dilated. Um, so there's, there's a dilate method to do that. This takes a, a thing called a kernel, which I actually kind of understand what that is. Uh, and then iterations, which is just how many times we want to dilate this image. Now the kernel, I, I made this animation to try to illustrate what it is. 
It's a five by five matrix. So it's got five rows and five columns. And what it does is it takes that matrix and it applies it over the image. And it's looking, so the red square there represents my five by five matrix. And at any point, if there is a black line from the, the image that I'm dilating inside of the red square, it will then use in that center square, it'll, it'll make a mark. Now, it'll typically take the same color value. I did it in blue just so you could kind of see it happening. Um, really, all you have to know is that this just makes the lines thicker. And you know, if, if you don't fully understand the, the kernel process and, and selecting all of that, plug in numbers until you get one that works. Um, that's my mantra for the whole thing. Um, so I look at the cards, and one thing that I noticed when I had this image is that the card, out of all of the shapes there, is rectangular. And I mean, you know, if you look at a card, it, it is. It's rectangular. I mean, it's got rounded corners, but it's, it's roughly rectangular. And um, so if I want to isolate it, it might help to look at the various shapes inside of the image. And I say it might help because I've realized in prepping this talk that that's not what I fully did. Um, and going back, I would, I would change that. And I'll kind of talk about that in a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to pull out all of these shapes. So I want to pull out, tr try to pull out the rectangle, try to pull out some of the more circular shapes. And what I'm doing there is, is finding the contours. So the edges that get exploded up, those are only just the lines. Um, the contours are trying to find the connected shapes that the lines make. Um, there is a, a find contours method that we can use. It, like most of these methods, takes multiple parameters, and I know a little bit about what they do. Uh, the first one is the retrieval mode. So if you, if you actually go back and look at this, um, there's the suit and all of the stuff that I think that makes up a, a jack. So the, the jack image there inside of the rectangle is considered a child image to the, the, the big rectangle part. Um, so the retrieval mode is just, whoops. We're going this way. So the retrieval mode is how do we want to organize that information? I don't care about the hierarchies. I just want the shapes. So that's what RETR list does. Um, the other part, the chain of proc simple, that's telling me how many points to return back. You know, if I have a, a straight line, uh, you may, if, if you go back to like elementary school, when you learn about lines, they tell you lines are just a bunch of points that are kind of connected. Um, I don't need any of those inner points. I just kind of need the endpoints. And so what chain of proc simple does is it, it gets rid of the redundant points. Um, and then I'm going to do this thing where I sort them by area, uh, and that'll, that'll come up a little bit. But all of this to say we want to try to find some rectangles. Um, so then I create this, this process method. And inside of this process method, I'm looping through all of those contours that I created. And I'm finding this minimum area rectangle that bounds it. So if I have a shape, I'm going to try to get a rectangle that can tightly surround that shape. Um, don't worry, the pictures are coming back. And, and maybe that'll steer us in the right direction. Um, so I find the contours. And then I say, draw a rectangle around those contours. And this is what I get. Still a lot of fuzzy information in the image. Um, what I should have done probably at the beginning was say, of those contours, maybe find the ones that only have like four sides, because that, that would have been the way to get a rectangle. Um, and in hindsight, that's what I would do. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that whole, I come from a math background, so I'm going to pull the whole, this exercise is left for the reader. Um, so feel free. I'll have the full code samples at the end. You can, you can tinker around in it a little bit and, and maybe do that, and you'll probably get better results. Um, but when I do this, I have a lot of rectangles. And I still need to filter out some of the rectangles. So the next thing I did was I pulled out a ruler. And I measured the card. Now, I can't just say, look for a card of a specific dimension, uh, because it's going to change based on how close it is to the camera. So what I do is I look at the aspect ratio. I take the width of the card, which is 7.2 centimeters. And I take the height of the card, which is 10.3 centimeters. And if I take the bigger number and divide the smaller number, I get 1.43. So I'm going to look for rectangles that are approximately 1.43 in aspect ratio. And there's some code to do that. Um, what I'm doing here is that, that min area rectangle, before I was just looking at this, this rect variable, um, you can actually pull this out into what will give you a width and a height. Um, 
and then I do some math there. Uh, this, this looks a little more complicated than it is because if you turn the card on its side, the width is now the longest thing. If you do it this way, the height is the longest thing. So I have to just do, I, I don't know if Python has ternary operators. I think this is kind of the ternary operator of, the, of what I was seeing. So um, that's what I did. And then I say, if it's between 1.4 and 1.5, 1.45. Because if I angle the card a little bit, like not have it facing the camera perfectly, it affects the things like the aspect ratio. I tried the numbers until it worked. And this is kind of what I get. Uh, so it's, it's not perfect. There's still some, this big square flashing around and it's still picking up on some of the stuff on the wall, but it's getting pretty close. I'm getting rid of a lot of those extra shapes. One thing that you might notice with the card, aside from when that big square comes up, the card is the biggest rectangle in the whole thing. And so if you think back to when I created the, the contours, I sorted them by area. So instead of looping through all of the contours, maybe I just loop through the first two? Is it two or three? I, I get confused in that. Um, the first few. We'll, we'll leave it at few. Uh, so I'm filtering out, I'm saying, get rid of all the little small ones, because I don't care about the small contours, I just want the, the bigger ones. And this is what I get. And it's still, it's got some flaws, but it still works. No deep learning, no neural networks, no training, just edges. Solving problems based on looking at the image and thinking, how do we process this as a person? Now this is how, this is all I had time to get to, uh, for this talk specifically, but I do have showing you the full example. Um, so up top, I'm doing the same thing. It's, it's doing some detection. There's a bunch of extra imagery there. Um, so the bottom uh, is the, if you look at the, the leftmost here, this is what that bounding box is seeing. So I'm, I'm taking that bound part of the image and I'm just extracting it. Uh, the middle is what I've trained it to see. So I, I, I took all of the, the aces, queens, kings, jacks, and I scanned them in. Um, I converted them to a black and white thresholded image, and that's what the middle thing is. And then what I'm doing is I'm going through all of those trained images, and I'm just subtracting the pixel values. And so I believe it's looking for images that have the most amount of black, because black assumes that, that there's, they're matched pixels. And so you can see on successful matches, it's pretty good at, at uh, almost having a, a black rectangle there. So it's a very, very um, non-trained, not, not, it's not a complex way of, of doing this whole recognition. But it works, which is the coolest part. Like when this started working, I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I got really excited. Um, so hopefully you can take this code at some point and, and maybe try to build around it do some more complex things with it. Um, I'd like to get it, get it to where I could see multiple cards. I think that would be really cool. Um, and I'm sure that there, there's a good way to go about doing that as well. Um, so the, the kind of the few other things I want to leave you with that maybe go outside of computer vision is to try to simplify things whenever possible. So a lot of times what we do as software developers or even as people who just write code is we take complex problems and we come up with solutions. And the more that we can take those complex problems and break them into smaller pieces, the more successful we're going to be. Like, when I start with a webcam image, it's got a lot of things like color and noise and things in the background. And each of those normalization steps was done for a reason. It was done to simplify so that the computer can understand it. And then the second thing I want to share with you is to just dive in. I have very little numerical data science background. I have very little in the way of Python. Um, and so I feel like if I can approach this, um, it, it, it can be a very more entry level area of computer vision. Um, I've seen people where, where they'll, they'll get discouraged, where they're like, you know, I don't have enough of this knowledge to start working. And then they never start. Um, sometimes the fun of it is, is just getting able to plug in numbers for a week and then eventually getting to see that thing that you've created. So um, I would definitely encourage you to you know, play around with it, tweak some of the numbers. Um, it is only trained to this, uh, this set of cards. Um, so if I show like this other set, it, it doesn't match because it, it only knows the one set of cards. Um, 
And then if you have any questions or you want to reach out, uh, my name is Steve. I go by at Crost with a zero because I created this in the 90s and LeetSpeak was really cool back then. Um, and so then you know, I've taken that to Twitter and GitHub and everything else. Uh, I also have an email there and then smcrow.net. That's just a landing page to take you to other places I live on the internet. Um, I also have this link that'll take you to the GitHub repo has all of the code in it. I didn't do anything like a Jupyter notebook. That's like a buzzword that I've heard float around and um, I, I guess I'm not there yet. Uh, but I do have some code samples there. Um, I'm eventually gonna kind of create a blog post and talk about that process a little bit and then I'll link to it from there. I'll probably tweet out about it. Um, but thanks for showing up and being here and uh, really appreciate it. So. <laughs>